and uh, it's also uh, a good time to talk about the game because, like, just within these days, it's going to be five years uh, since we submitted the global release of the game. So Heyday is going to turn uh, in a week or so five years old, and it's still it's still rocking there, living the Heyday. But uh, six years ago, when we Six years ago, when we started developing the game, the company was actually quite different. So now you know Supercell as uh, like using bright colors, uh, characters that can be identified, but that wasn't what the company was started for. Uh, actually, the, the original pitch for us was that we, like, we are going to do something different on Facebook, on casual platform. Uh, our pitch was for investors that we are developing something where Farmville meets World of Warcraft. You may have heard this bitch before, not really a unique one. And uh, so our take was that like, we, we created like proper MMO uh, using our own en engines, uh, made it to Flash. It was actually technically operating really well. And when we interviewed MMO players, when they were testing the game, they said, oh, this is awesome. Like, I've been looking for this experience. And they never came back. So there was clearly like a misfit with the product. That people, people they said that they like this game, but they actually actually like these kind of games uh, with a proper ex experience on PC. But still, uh, we got a lot of learnings. We we got in, got to build our engines. We got to uh, play around with uh, with clans. A lot of social gameplay elements, and of course, we we got to raise uh, the money that gave us the opportunity to actually pivot to a new di new direction. And in 2011, uh, when I was joining Supercell, like, uh, I didn't believe in the company at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ilka's speech to me was like, well, join then and do something that you believe in. <laughs> so uh, as one of the first uh, tasks for me, I was just releasing the game globally, was actually just working with a strategy with some others. Uh, but the market had shifted quite a, way, quite, quite a bit in the year. Uh, we saw that the... Facebook gaming was saturating. Still, like, in 2011, though, like many people were doing successful operations, and even in 2012, 2013, but we still saw that like it was get getting more and more challenging. And then at the same time, of course, the popularity of iPhone, uh, uh, the like App Store allowed in a purchase, so there was a big disruption. And just the numbers that we are hearing from the platform, they were just amazing. And then a big promise for all game developers back then was the launch of iPad. Uh, at least we all thought that like, iPad is going to be the gaming device. Like, you're going to abandon, uh, you're going to abandon consoles, PC, just focus on iPad with a big screen and carry it all the time with you. Just play. Uh, didn't really happen. And <laughs> and then Facebook, that was supposed to solve uh, the discovery problem uh, on mobile as well. Uh, they were bring, bringing a lot of new elements to the social feed and. A lot of new st stories that you were able to integrate directly to the game, and that was supposed to be the coolest thing ever. Didn't really happen, but at least we had one thing right. So, like uh, iOS was right, and App Store was the distribution channel that was about to dominate the market for at least a few years before Google Play. Then one thing that we also saw, like though we started on Facebook with Flash, uh, our developers' background mostly is on mobile. Thanks to Nokia, like first with uh, Java mobile games, and then at Digital Chocolate, many of us were making iPhone games just uh, after release of the uh, of the device. So going to mobile was actually going back to our old roots, and the shift wasn't that uh, m magical. Uh, we were able to even use our own uh, old engine, uh, the Flash engine. We're still developing pretty much on Flash. Uh, we did quite a lot of restructuring, but uh, after a month or so, we had our own. Uh, mobile engine ready. So in uh, 2011, we got uh, no early November or end of October, we got together and uh, like thought like we we, did, we we need to do a change. So uh, we killed the game that we had, uh, Gunshine. Uh, we killed all the production and uh, made a decision that we're gonna do a big pivot to mobile. And so as uh, kind of mani management and founders, like, like the people were super worried, like, what's going to happen? Uh, how the employees are, are going to react to this? But uh, it seemed that everybody had kind of anticipated this, that they were seeing that, like, the, the platform itself wasn't that in interesting. And then maybe because of the history, the shift was uh, really easy, and people felt almost relieved with it. Uh, development of the game started in uh, November 2011. Uh, 
it wasn't the easiest development to start. Like people had joined the company to do uh, MMO, uh, <laughs> and then one day I uh, like uh, I got a few people to work with me. Uh, we, we sat down like, okay, guys, I know why you joined the company, but look at this. We have a good idea. We're going to do a farming game. <laughs> and uh, and still like like. We played the f like first two days playing just uh, board games, uh, different simulation games to take some distance away from farming. And uh, I asked like if they could give me two weeks to work uh, to work on the game. And like within two weeks, everybody should feel motivated to the game because I felt that there's a lot we could explore with that team on the uh, on the genre. And uh, like like first of all, like I, I believe that there was a big opportunity. Like. There were, of course, farming games already on the platform, but nobody had really defined. Like farming games had been defined by Zynga, but we didn't really believe that that game was a game. Uh, like the game, like farm introduced a lot of interesting elements. Like with cows, you can get milk, but in the world of farm, well, from cows you get coins. From chickens, you get coins. And whatever you did, you got coins. And we as board gamers thought that, like this is kind of like they're not taking the opportunity because farming itself is a game. Like it has all the loops that you need in game. You do something, then you uh, you harvest it, you process it, you have supply chains, you sell it. Like, you don't really need to invent it. Everybody knows how farming works, works how markets work. So why in, instead of inventing something that you get from coins from chickens, like you just get the real goods and you play with that. And you don't need to teach the gameplay, and that's always. Uh, when you have something uh, that's easy to teach for the uh, players. So instead of like starting with the complexity, we started, wanted to start with the simplicity that every kind of, uh, everybody can play the game. And also playing the game, like we thought that, like, nobody really understood the platform. Uh, they were copying mostly uh, designs from mouse. Uh, we were just getting ourselves like, familiar with touch, touch phones and like, we, f we felt like you leave the world of iOS, like the native design, and then you go to these games, and you have the mouse you are. Like there's a there's a friction in between that, uh, like it must must be broken. Like you, you must be able to do something better. And we, we tried to explore what are the good implementations. Uh, we didn't really find any. There were no any blogs about it. There were no books about it. So we st we started to study like how Apple and Google had implemented their platforms and how did it feel to do uh, play physical goods. So. As a board gamers, of course, like with the physical object, we started to understand how the interactions happened and started to get into how to do UX on on mobile. But it's an interesting time because like we we had to do like proper research and uh, like study and learn instead of being inspired by others as you often do in gaming. And then with frictionless design, so f Facebook had told us that uh, loading times uh, matter. Uh, from the day one, I, I think our games have been the fastest loading. The fastest server games loading, and we we started to put attention to that uh, the day one. And with all the goals, like we wanted to make it fast. We were burning money. There was no money coming in. We had four teams making games, so we knew that like we we don't wanna, we don't have too many shots. So uh, and we didn't know if if, if we are gonna make it with this one. So instead of putting all efforts to this, like let's be fast and learn as fast as possible. And uh, yeah, I said like here, the original goal was to submit to beta in five months. It was pretty uh, hungry taken that when we started, we didn't have the engine ready. We, didn't, we couldn't uh, code the game. We didn't quite hit it. Uh, we got the submission in six months, which was still pretty okay for us. We had maybe game, game content for, uh, we thought, one, one month. So the reality was two, one week. And uh, the game didn't have the elements that we had in the game in the global launch, but at least we got the proof that the game um, g game had a, uh, quite a lot of demand. And some of the things that gave us the possibility to make the game so fast uh, was that we, like from the day one, we, we focused that uh, we want to be fast. And the, the, the way there was, so when we started to make the design, we, cut, we did cut corners to think like, uh, what are the scalable resources, like what you can do with a small team. Because the small team was a limitation already back then and we've got to learn to appreciate it. And even today, we try to define the sandbox uh, based on time and based, uh, based on number of developers. In the team, uh, we had one front-end developer, one back-end developer, 
like one and a half artist, one designer, and me. But I was also co-heading marketing at that time. So uh, not too many people, but uh, and even like surprisingly little hours. But we're just super focused on devel developing the game. And one thing that helped us was also the structure that if we wanted to do something, change the design, change animals, there was nobody to approve approve it. So it was the team always making the decisions, whatever they were. Of course, people were informed, but uh, we didn't need to ask, uh, uh, ask a, a, a permission if we wanted to do a big change. And the first version of Hey Day is here. <laughs> it's uh, very visual, but you get the game loop. It's about money. You have the supply chain. We're thinking what you need to have in the uh, game. You need animals. You need some kind of area where you grow. You know, silo to get a few constraints. And then you expand. Uh, then something about, about the visual look and feel. Uh, all of the material that I've, I've collected here are from uh, like emails and like the, from the documentation. The, they haven't been adjusted, and they may look a bit different than they are w nowadays. But with the visual look and feel, we wanted to do again like frictionless, something very easy to approach, uh, something that you all can r recognize from uh, from a media. Maybe now retrospectively thinking, the challenge is, is that like the game isn't that deep. Uh, it's pretty general, and uh, the brand isn't as strong as it could be otherwise. And the second thing was that the, the environment was there to be a relaxing environment, to take your stress down, it's like a place where you want to come. And of course, the, then the theme like that fits this well is a, a bit kind of nostalgic Western, something between the World War American farm. Uh, the first, this is the first visual of the game. Uh, very green, very pride, and a lot of elements that we never brought to the game. So here, yeah, coming from board games and more complex games, we were thinking like boosters and that the game would be around those. But we soon uh, understood that people don't really want to change the structure of the game because of, of their farm. They want to be decorating, and if you ha add those kind of bonus systems, it changes the game. Appeals some players, but not the players that we were targeting for. Um, then, uh, coming a bit more complex, so we have animals with interactions, and at that point we started to understand, like, hey, we need to simplify that. If we show uh, a lot of icons, like icons on, uh, in general, like the game is difficult to read, and icons are, again, something that don't communicate well uh, the gameplay. I don't, know, don't communicate well the reality. There were fences. Uh, there was a, one design idea behind that that never was implemented or never was proven. There was poop or soil uh, on the crowns, but it ended up being pretty dirty. And uh, we didn't want to uh, create an experience when it, where you come back to the game that you, your first thing is to collect shit. But kind of with all, all of this, we started thinking that, like, uh, like, why do you need to have icons on top of animals and game objects to communicate? What's the need to do? Like, there needs to be other way to do it. Uh, we know the class was doing a uh, 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 chosen alternative path, but we, we we got an idea. Like, hey, let's think about like, can we do it uh, with the visuals? I'm gonna get back to that later. And then, yeah, getting to the UI. Apparently, we're thinking of missions, never, never introduced to the game. But uh, clearly, like that was that was in all games. So we thought also that it needs to be in a game. But then when we started thinking, like, like why do you need to have missions in the game? Missions uh, give you guide you to this linear way of playing the game. Like, wouldn't it be cooler if players actually understand and find their own way, uh, explore the game, and find their own uh, patterns to play the game? Like, if you m give them the tools for that, and they ma manage to do that the engagement with the game must be higher. And this is like, coming from behavioral psychology, it should be pretty familiar for game developers. And this is a hypothesis that we had, and we skipped the mission design, and all the Americans were like, you're crazy. Like, you can't do that. All the games have missions, because players don't know how to play games. And they're like, yeah, OK, let's just have a shorter, uh, shorter tutorial, because that really forces people to think. Like, players don't want to think. And w but we managed, managed to pull it out, and like, the 
for, for example, in the beginning of the day one retention was around 65% in the US. So it did really prove out like if you have realistic uh, gameplay and you have uh, graphics that help the player to understand what's happening there, like you don't need that much of a hand, you don't need that much of uh, hand keeping. <coughs> and the end result was uh, this was the competition that we had on iOS uh, Farmville. Uh, how, how they saw farming and uh, after two months how, what we had on visuals. Uh, w with the visuals uh, we felt that okay, we maybe they nailed down something we, we, that w and we believed in it. Something about, uh, that is very critical in the game is animals. We actually started the game uh, with an idea that we are not going to have characters. And again the reason was mainly a limitation, like we didn't have people who knew how to do characters. <laughs> and if you if you uh, lack a resource, then like try to find an alternative way to do the game. So uh, not having human characters there, we understood like we need to have really strong animals there uh, that that added, like create an identity around the game. The uh, characters were brought later still, but we started with with no animal, uh, no, no no human characters. And uh, here are some um, early versions of the characters and. Uh, results from the uh, user testing that uh, that we got. So we're comparing animals to other farming games and uh, kind of what people were appreciating and what we what was in interesting for us that of course like maybe the technical character the te te technical quality of our characters was higher, but what people were identifying there was actually the emotional aspects. So like, hey, the chicken is more funny, uh, or yeah. Uh, that's more goofy, and then comparing the pigs, our own pigs. Uh, like, what do you like more? And uh, again, like the pig with more character uh, is more interesting. The second thing was uh, like, if we are not going to have icons with animals, how we are going to communicate the state? This is also an animal, a cow that never came uh, went to the game. How, how how to communicate the state? Like, can you do it really uh, with different stages? And if you do it like you must go o really overboard with the art. And we were testing little and testing with users and they didn't really see the difference, so we chose a bit cartoony way. So how to milk a cow. So that's a normal cow, happy cow. Uh, getting a bit anxious. And then like, <laughs> when you really need to milk the cow, uh, they, they you have a, it's a, it, it's a bit gross with all the animals, but we had to create a kind of really strong clue for the player what to do and this seemed to work but we never implemented this cow <laughs> but you all get the idea and uh, the, uh, interestingly like me and this uh, my designer like we didn't have any UI or UX expertise uh, like we had never uh, designed a UI but we had only one and a half artists in the team so they didn't have time to work on the UI so we had to be prototyping uh, not knowing any tools, we did prototyping with PowerPoint animations. <laughs> and uh, and now, now, now we are going to uh, dive into high-tech uh, UI tools, so I'm going to show some of the uh, uh, UI animations that we were using in Heyday development before the artists got the job. They didn't have jo time to do the iteration, so they wanted to, to, get, to, to get a like, proper design. So, uh, f field activation, you click it, get ac gets activated, you select the crop, and uh, one of the biggest innovations of Heyday was kind of painting with your finger, so uh, doing multiple actions with one swipe. And now this feels like pretty standard on uh, iOS games, but there, there was nobody b before us that had done it. And uh, we even like patented just for uh, in case somebody sues us for some reason. Uh, but uh, of course, never applied to patent because, uh, as a game developers, we know that like using best practices from other game developers, that that's how games are made. And uh, but the the lawyers wanted us to patent it, uh, but they made an agreement. But that but we're never gonna be the first one to sue. So there's an agreement about that also. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some more some more of the usability. We can click it through. Next slide. Yeah, it, it's been uh, five years, and the game is still, it, it, it's rocking, it's a big game. Uh, currently, the, it has a development team of 
10, and the game is actively developed. Uh, our teams in live games are very small. Even in Class of Clans, the team size is 16, and that uh, that has uh, functions from Q&A to uh, community management included, and data scientists. So the teams are very small, and uh, we, w that's the way how we like to work. It's not the only right way to do, but it's kind of how we want to do it. To keep organization really flat, you need to have really, really small teams. Uh, and uh, during the five years, there's been roughly 60 after submissions, so the team has been busy. Uh, some of them have been uh, planned, many of them have been unplanned. Uh, and now the focus is on what we call eventfulness. Uh, so you're making more games more dynamic, so there's stuff happening in the game uh, that keeps players engaged, and of course creating more social layers. Uh, going through the original design of Heyday, like we didn't really think uh, much on social. We thought it's mostly a single player experience, so, but during the five years we brought of course a bunch of social uh, experience on top of that, and now the game is truly a social game. And surprisingly, the game is still the leading farming game. Uh, there's been new games coming and going, but Heyday seems to be uh, pretty steadily there. And the game has been like more than 800 days uh, on the top crossing 10 in the US and it's still doing pretty well. So this from the last month. Uh, so between 40 and 60 top crossing position uh, in the US. Uh, but what, ha what has been pretty special in Heyday that it's been performing uh, in many territories extraordinarily well, even better than a class of clans. And one of the countries where they seem to like a lot of farming is Switzerland. <laughs> And the other example is Denmark. And uh, I don't know what, like, what, what, what's there, but they, they seem to like Heyday. Uh, the, like a lot of have changed in, since uh, days of starting Heyday development. And like just last week, I actually started a new development. And how we are approaching new development, of course, it's different. Like many of the back then, like you had a bunch of opportunities. You pretty much selected the category, you chose some good references or you innovated new uh, that were native for the platform and did a good execution, it was straightforward. Uh, we know that, uh, at least we don't believe in that, so we don't believe in uh, small iterations anymore. Like if somebody has played a game like Heyday or, or uh, build and battle game like Clash of Clans or Boom Beats for years, like they need quite a bit innovation to start something new. And, uh, some people say that the market is saturated. We neither believe in that. Just two years, we saw two like, games coming out from nowhere, Clash Royale and Pokemon Go. Of course, both games had big brands, but both games also had new gameplay elements that were not familiar on the mobile. And like, the people were just, I think they're hungry for new content. Uh, so definitely the platform isn't saturated. Maybe it's saturated for existing game systems, and you need to be innovating about it. At least we believe there's plenty of opportunity. And uh, that's also what we are uh, focusing on. And uh, we think that the, the structure that we have really gives us uh, more kind of a small advantage to learn a lot, to test a lot. And uh, Linda already uh, talked about the Supercell model and just uh, practical examples what, what it means that the game teams, they have the full independence in deciding what they are making. So it's not about like running the operation, but starting from the idea, like what kind of idea, what kind of brand, uh, what kind of gameplay systems, what are the timelines, uh, when to ship the game or when to kill it. It's a, a, lo a lot of responsibility, but it, it's been working for us uh, to learn and innovate quite a, uh, as a good platform. Some of the values that are like we see that have been meaningful for us and these are coming from the questionnaires from our people so not something that people like Ilka our CEO invented and say that these are important for us so these are outcomes from a questionnaire that was run a year and a half ago and uh, kind of how I see is that like it all starts with trust so the, the company was built on trust and of course it means like occasionally you trust on wrong things and you fail but it doesn't matter uh, because with trust you can create good things. And what we are trying to maximize always is, is the, uh, the best things to happen. Like you can fail as long as you manage to uh, deliver occasionally. With a trust, uh, you get a 
create a good pl platform also to uh, aim high, to create high quality, and to learn. And when you're really looking for that, you need to focus on uh, focus on your work. And w one thing that, that helps us to focus is that the game teams are not trying to kind of satisfy the need of artificial layers in the organization. Like mentioned before, green light meetings or uh, some VPs coming from abroad even to say what should be in the game. So they're really focused on uh, delivering what they think is best for the audience. And uh, with the focus also, like uh, uh, kind of the, the elements there are the like independence and responsibility that 